Edmund, how wonderful to have you back in Narnia. You're so grown up. And you look just the same. <laughs> Take me home, I don't like it here. I'm afraid there's no going back. Right, Elf. Yes, Your Majesty. Bring spiced wine for Queen Lucy and King Edmund. Queen? King? King of what? Of Narnia, sire. Hurry, Rhinoth, the Majesty's a wet through and cold. Of course. Well, I don't want spiced wine. We need plum trees, vitaminized nerve tonic. But only if it's made with distilled water. I never drink plain water from the tap. Sorry? Spiced wine. <laughs> I won't stay here. I demand that you put me off at the next stop. Oh, what's that? Breathe it in. Take it away. I can't stand performing animals. Am I to understand that this singularly discourteous person is under your majesty's protection? You. Oh, quickly, to your cabins before you all catch cold. Lead the way, Rebuchim. For the sake of the lady, even a question of honour must give way. At least for the moment. You may have this cabin of mine, Lucy. But I'm afraid we've no women's clothes on board. I'll have to make do with these. It's not fair. I feel ill. She gets the best cabin. As befits a queen of Narnia. The motion of the ship won't worry you. I love it. We did a good deal of voyaging in our days in Narnia. When we're all in dry clothes, I shall tell you the reason for this voyage. Boys? I am on a great mission. On my coronation day, I swore to Aslan that once peace was established in Narnia, I would sail east for not less than a year and a day to find my father's lost friends or to avenge their deaths. Who are they, your father's friends? After my father was murdered by the wicked King Miraz, seven lords of Narnia were banished for no other reason than that they'd been loyal to my father, their old king. Seven missing lords. Where might they be? Queen Lucy, King Edmund, this is the captain of our ship, Lord Drinny. Man, your majesty. Seven lords are either somewhere in the outlying islands or farther away in the unknown eastern seas. Well, how long have you been at sea for so far? Nearly 30 days, sire. Fair wind from Cape Paravel to the island of Galma and then on to Terebinthia, where we repelled an attack by pirates. Ha ha! We should have given chase, boarded her, and hanged every mother's son of them. <laughs> we have sailed more than 400 leagues from Narnia. And soon we'll be approaching the Lone Island. And after the Lone Islands? Nobody knows, ma'am. It's years since anyone from Narnia went into those waters. It is after the Lone Islands that the real adventure begins. But why are we here? Did you call us? No, though I'm very glad you came. Perhaps someone else thought that we'd be useful on this quest. Aslan. That is the other thought in my mind. Aslan has always appeared from the east. Might we not on this voyage find him and greet him in his own land? That is my high hope, sire. Why not travel to the very edge of the eastern world, into Aslan's own country? That is a thought. But do you think Aslan's country a sort of place that you can, well, just sail into? I know not, madame. But there is this. When I was in my cradle, a woodwoman, a dryad, spoke this verse over me. Where sky and water meet, where the waves grow sweet, doubt not, Reaper Chief, to find all you seek. There, in the utter east. I really must go to see Eustace. It's terrible to be seasick. If only I had my magic flask here, I could kill him. What? Where's that precious cordial on him? Good job it isn't here. But it is. Rhino, Majesty. to the ship's medicine store. In the locked cupboard, there's a flask. I know the one, sir. Take me to the British Consul. To the what? Ignore him. There isn't one. You're worlds beyond British jurisdiction. How unfair. 
civilized. Why should I have to share this pooky little cabin with you and you? It's not fair. Called the Dawn Treader. A beauty she is. A lady, as sailors say. Her lines perfect. Her colors pure. Every spar, rope, and pin lovingly made. These days, I ask you, and no wireless either. No wireless. Here's the ship's mate, Rince, a good fellow who will get our ship wherever we wish to go. Hi, Captain, that I will. They talk as though it's like Queen Mary. I've been on motorboats, on ferries that were bigger than this. It's a danger to all our lives putting to sea in a thimble like this. Worm. Pipe down. If the young master knows so much about seagoing ships, perhaps he'd like a view from the ship's top. <laughs> Thank you very much. I've more sense than that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember how important it always was to me. Oh, Lucy, this is magnificent. Must have a look out, shipmates. Ah! You ah. stop us at once! Jack and Apes, I'll kill you for this! Pip, put oh, that sword away! Yeah. It's not safe! Ah. I'll tell Caspian, I'll have you muzzled and tied up! Eustace, ah. let go! Ah. Why don't you draw your sword, Poltroon? Draw your sword and fight, or I'll beat you black and blue. Don't be silly, I haven't got a sword. You mean you don't intend to give me satisfaction? Look, if you can't take a joke... A joke! Eustace! I'll give him joke. Give him answer, the mouse has challenged you to a duel. It's a silly joke! Silly! Who is this creature? But Eustace, I can lend you a sword. I don't want to be lent a sword! It's not a proper match, sire. Master Eustace must be handicapped. He's much bigger than his opponent. Look here. If you think for one moment that I am going to fight with that thing... Thing! On guard, boy! Land ho! Land ho! The first of the Lone Islands. Oh, it's so long since we saw the last. since anyone from Narnia came to these islands. It's just possible they may not acknowledge that we still rule them. In which case, it would not be safe for you to be known as king. We have our swords. You and I have. If it's a case of reconquering these islands, I'd prefer to come back, thank you, with a larger army. Good morning to you all. Good morning to you. Is there still a governor of the Lone Islands? Oh, to be sure there is. Governor Gumpus. His sufficiency lives in the town of Narrowhaven on the island of Doon. But you'll stay and drink with us. We're just out for a morning stroll. Now then, give them some ale, mates. <laughs> Here you are then. And here's Tom! Oh, <laughs> oh, careful! Oh, Don't damage that beast tax. <laughs> the best price of the lot, I shouldn't wonder. Coward! Poltroon! Give me my sword if you dare! Well, I never. It speaks. Well, <laughs> blowed if I take less than 200 crescents for him. So that's what you are? Kidnappers and slavers? Oh, now, now. The easier you take it, the pleasanter all round, see? 
<laughs> I don't do this for fun. Got my living to make same as anyone else. <laughs> Over to Narrow Haven. It's market day there tomorrow. <laughs> is there a British consul there, yeah, like man? Is there a witch? Not a witch. A witch is a woman. The British consul, usually one may say, is always a man. And I wish to see him immediately. Shut up! Now, the mouse is a fair treat, but this one had talked the hind leg off a donkey. Why, yeah. ah, you wicked, weak livered weasel, <laughs> put me down! Yeah. Ah, you marvellous. It's as good as a play, you can't help thinking he understands what he's saying. <laughs> Oh, was it one of you trained it? Very good, I must say. A fine job. <laughs> Get off! On. Well, Pug, more of your usual wares. Oh, your lordship, don't starve. You know all's done with the authority of Governor Gumpus. They're so young. If only I had the means. I must be off if it please your lordship. How much do you want for that young man? Oh, I knew your lordship would pick on the best. No deceiving your lordship with anything second rate. <laughs> now, that boy now, well, I've got kind of fond of him myself. Of course, I'm that tender-hearted, I didn't ever ought to have taken up this job. Still, to a gentleman like your lordship... Tell me your price, Carrion. Do you think I want to listen to some rigmarole about your filthy trade? Special price for your lordship. Only 300 crescents. Now, to anyone else, I'll, I'll have give you 150. Please! Please don't separate us. You don't know who... You'll see! 150, then. As for you, little maiden, I'd like to buy you all. Release the boy, Pug. And listen to me. Look after these others well while they're in your care. For if I hear anything to the contrary, it'll be the worst for you. Now, who ever heard of a gentleman in my line of business who takes better care of their stock than what I do? I treat them as I do my own children. That's likely enough to be true. This way, lad. It's all your fault! Yeah. Now you go free! It's not fair! Yeah, Lucy, we'll be together again soon, I promise. I, I promise! Now don't you start taking on and spoiling your pretty looks. Well, no one will buy you at the market tomorrow. You'll be a good girl and there won't be nothing to cry about. Be afraid of me, boy. I'm not treating you badly. I bought you because you reminded me of someone. Who's that, my lord? Why you remind me of my master, King Caspian of Narnia. My lord, I am your master. <laughs> I am King Caspian. <laughs> Come here, my little naughty spinner. <laughs> Get down! Get down! Get down. Come on, get down! Come on, get You make very free. How shall I know this to be true? First, by my face. Secondly, within six guesses, I know who you are. I have come to search for the seven missing lords. Burn, Octesian, Restimar. I forget the others. Finally, if your lordship will give me a sword, I shall prove in clean battle that I am the son of your old friend and master. I too am Caspian, lawful king of Narnia, lord of Caer Paravel, and emperor of the Lone Islands. By heaven, it is his father's very voice and trick of speech. My liege, your majesty. I am Lord Byrne. The monies your lordship paid for our person will be made good from the royal treasury. Sire, I have moved his sufficiency, the governor, a hundred times to crush this vile traffic in human flesh. Yes, we must talk of the state of these islands. But first, what is your lordship's story? 
Short enough, sire. I came thus far with my six fellows, met and married a girl of these islands, and decided I'd had enough of the sea. I could not return to Narnia while your majesty's uncle Miraz held the throne. So I've lived here, happily, I suppose, ever since. And this governor, Gumpus, does he still acknowledge the king of Narnia for his law? In word, yes, all is done in the king's name. But he would not be happy to find a real live king of Narnia coming upon him. It's all your fault. It's been your fault from the beginning. You would look at that picture in the bedroom and suck up to that rotten Caspian who struts around pretending to be a king. He is a king! Be quiet, Eustace. You don't understand anything. I shall present myself. If your majesty were to come upon him alone and unarmed, your life would be in great danger. What following has your majesty in these waters? There's my ship just rounding the point. We're about 20 swords if it came to a fight. Let's have her in and fall upon Pug and free my friends. Nay, not by my counsel. At the first sign of a fight, there'd be plenty of local pirates to rescue Pug. But I can't at a minute's notice get reinforcements from home. What am I to do? I believe your majesty must work by a show of more power than you really have. And by terror of the king's name, perhaps Gumpus can be overawed. Let us go aboard, sire. and free our friend. Nay, Captain. Run up the King's banner, hang out all the shields, and stand as many fighting men as you can on deck. Ship's company! Run up the King's banner! Hear the ship! Full armor! For battle! Stay here tonight. Tomorrow I shall send a messenger to those good people of Narrowhaven who are said to be still loyal to Your Majesty. With luck on our arrival, there will be enough of them to make such a show of welcome that it will frighten Governor Gumpus out of his wits. Captain, you will stay with the ship and guard the mouth of the harbor. Aye. If only I were with my friends. Tomorrow, sir. my pretty ones. Market day today. <laughs> Make way for His Majesty Caspian, King of Narnia, Lord of Cape Paravel, Those are Gumpus's men. Our first task is to get past them. visit to his trusty servant Gumpus, governor of the Lone Islands. Can't see his sufficiency. No interviews without appointment except between 9 and 10 p.m. second Saturday every month. Uncover before your king, dog. Do it immediately. Oh. We'll do it for you. Now for the real test. The governor's guards. Here, 
this. King Caspian of Narnia will speak. Captain, it is our wish that our royal visitation should be an occasion of joy and not of terror. Otherwise, I'd have something to say about the state of your men's armour and their general unpreparedness. As it is, you are pardoned. Command a cask of wine be opened, that the men may drink our royal health. And now to the governor's office. Can we bluff the governor himself? Your Majesty, I do not think it would occur to Gumpus that anyone would come to take these islands with only 50 men. Courage. His Excellency Caspian, King of Narnia, Emperor of the Lone Islands. No interviews without appointments, except between 9 and 10 p.m. on the second Saturday of every month. We are come to inquire into your sufficiency's conduct of your office. First, I find no record that the tribute due from these islands to the crown of Narnia has been paid for 150 years. That would be a question to raise at the next council meeting, which is not until next month. If anyone then moves that a commission of inquiry be set up next year... Silence! It is also clearly written in our laws that if the tribute is not delivered, the whole debt must be paid by the governor out of his own pocket. Above all, I wish to know why you have permitted this abominable traffic in slaves. Absolutely necessary! Free workmen demand wages! No profit for us in that soul! Oh, so, slave, it is contrary to the laws and practices of our dominions and must stop. I can take no responsibility for any such action. Then you are relieved of your post. But you can't! Well, you can't! You hereby swear to govern the Lone Islands in accordance with the old customs, laws, and practices of Narnia? I swear, Your Majesty. I think we've had enough of governors. I pronounce you Duke of the Lone Islands. <laughs> this is all very well, but the question is whether you gentlemen will stop play-acting. The question you... is whether you and your followers will leave without a flogging or with one. The choice is yours. Out of the slave market and pray that we are on time. Now, what am I bid for this pretty young lady? Very handy around the house, I'm sure a perfect housemaid. Oh, look at her! What spirit! Such good sport to be had in the taming of her! Now, what am I bid? 200 crescent! Done, sir! Now, this fine young warrior, strong, sturdy, oh, wait, of good camera. stock. <laughs> Why not the two together? Two strong boys. Oh, Only five oh, crescents oh, extra for this one. Oh, oh. I get rid of this one. I, I tell you what, I'll throw him in for free. <laughs> no? All right. This one only then. What am I bid? What am I bid for this please lad? Don't split us up. Please don't. You do as you're told. Stop. Make way! Make way for His Excellency Caspian, King of Narnia! Hug! Hear me! The slave trade is now forbidden in our dominions. I declare every slave in this market free. Edmund. Lucy! And Reaper Cheap? Reaper Cheap is here, sire! <laughs> And where's, um, what's his name? Him. Take him and welcome. I've never seen such a drug on the market. Threw him in free in the end and still nobody would take him. Couldn't have him because of his miserable face. Tax! Bring out Sulky. I see you've been strutting around enjoying yourself as usual while we've been prisoners. 
I don't suppose you've even found whether or not this place has a British consul. Do pipe down, Eustace. Don't say thank you, will you? No matter. Today is a day for rejoicing. The Lone Islands are returned peacefully to Narnia. I declare a public holiday. Yay! Now back to the Dawn Treader. We sail onward, ever east. <laughs> Come through the storm. But who knows what other hazards lie ahead? As many of us wonder about that, Your Majesty. The men heard wild rumors in Narrowhaven. Ah, oh, yes, the world is flat. And if we sail far enough eastwards, we'll tip over the edge. We'll be caught forever in the seas that swirl perpetually around the rim of the world. Or be consumed, the lot of us, by the magic fire that everlastingly burns the eastern sea. But past all hazards, there is Aslan's country, beyond the end of the world. Well, well, we can't get there. Who says so? Reapy Chief, save your strength to fight enemies, not friends. What is it, Captain? The wind. The wind has dropped away. We should jolly well hope so after that storm. Yes, ma'am. Stove in in the storm. We've almost no water left, sire. Food? Most of it ruined. We've rations enough for perhaps two days. I'm sure we'll find land soon. With oodles of fresh food and water. Come off it, Lucy. We will find land, won't we, Captain? I don't know, ma'am. I've known ships to be lost for weeks. And we food and water for two days. This must be the worst organized expedition ever. Sit it slowly, men. Make it last. Common sailors, you're supposed to be king and queen. Why don't you get your ration first? I would have thought that that was obvious. They have to work harder than us and need to keep their strength up. Rubbish. Caspian doesn't work them hard enough. This whole ship should be repaired by now. That's not possible, young fella. Until we strike land, we need new timbers. Yes. The 
bone idol. Shut up, worm. They're starved and they only get two cups of water a day. But I have told Caspian it is common knowledge that perspiration cools people down. So the men would need less water if they worked harder. And there'd be more the more for us, you mean. That is disgusting, Eustace, even for you. Will you look at the state the men are in? He's been nagging for days. Ought to be clapped in irons. Peace, Reeby Chief. Lucy. Boys. You just get off me, you hope. She got more than me. Not true, my lord. Nonsense, Eustace. Come on now, drink up. You're cheating me of my proper ration. I've been ill. I should get You're more. You're not ill now. Everyone gets the same. Now move along. Do you think you're doing? Getting a breath of fresh air. What's it to do with you? Why the mug? I, I, I was. Thief! Just... Thief! Wake up, oh, everyone! To the cast! To the cast! Little beast! On guard! What's happening here? Nothing! Nothing but outright theft of our precious water, sire. Eustace! That's awful! Shame on you, lad. Anyway, what was that thing doing prowling around the decks at night? Well, everybody knows why. Squat. The mast being too small for deck duty by day has been told to guard the cask at night. Well, masters, what are we to do with this thief? I'd give him the lash. Eustace, apologize. Apologize to us all, the men included. I most certainly will not. Eustace. I'm sorry. We'll do for now. But next time anyone is found stealing the water, it will mean two dozen of the best. Eustace, I know how you suffer. Everyone else is feeling just as thirsty. And we must all make the best of it. Back to bed, men. It's all over. A wind! And ahoy! And ho! Mountains! It has mountains! Is this an island? Or is this a new land? No one knows, Missy. We have no charts for these seas. We 
need timber for a new spar site. Right, Captain, I'll put some men on this right away. Lad! Timber for a new spar. Them? Aaron? Oh dear. I'm so weak. I can't possibly do any work. You're exactly as weak or as strong as any of us. Now get to it. Go and get some food for us. Everything all right, Reynolds? Uh, Lucy, could you get some wood for a fire, please? I'm not staying here. First day ashore for weeks, and they expect me to work like a common seaman. A bit of exploring will do me good. I'll rejoin them when they finish their day's work. Mustn't lose my way, though. The boat on the beach can only be a few minutes' walk away. Well, that would happen. Can't see a thing. Don't talk to yourself. It's the first time. This is terrible. So quiet. Quietest place I've ever been in. I'd better get back. Losing all sense of time too. Been here two minutes or two hours. What if that dratted Caspian and the others go aboard and sail off without me? They all hate me. They're just as likely to leave me here to the cannibals and Wild beasts. Well, they're not walking out on me. Think this is the way? Where's that blighter, Eustace? Oh, I've forgotten all about him. If I know Eustace, he's found some place to dodge work all day. And we'll be back as soon as his nostrils twitch to the smell of cooking. I hope so. I'd hate him to be lost. <laughs> Where's the sea? Where am I? Wish I'd never come. This is a nice place. It sounds as if there's something down there. seem to have seen me. What's wrong with it? Bet that it's some trick to lure me down. Well, there's no smoke coming from it. It doesn't seem to be moving. Others aren't going to get any of it. Eustace! Eustace! Oh, confound the little worm. Let me try with this. Eustace! 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 Why did he have to slink off like Eustace. that? I've just about had enough of him. But we must do something. He may have got lost or fallen in a hole or been captured by savages. I am. Or killed by wild beasts. Good rinse if he has. Master rinse. You never spoke a word that became you less. 
This fellow is no friend of mine, but he is of the Queen's blood, and it concerns our honour to find him and to avenge him if he is dead. Of course we'll find him. Tomorrow. If we can. Ooh, that bracelet's tight. What's that? Another dragon! Oh, oh well, that fool I've been. The brute had a mate and it's lying right beside me. Maybe if I move very carefully away from it. dangerous than we thought. Courage, comrades. Those brutes can fly, Your Majesty. We'd better stick together and get back to the camp. So, find a dragon. Good. Now I can get even with Caspian and Edmund. Except, they're better than nothing. And I have a feeling it's going to be a pretty lonely life here as a dragon, all on my own. Oh dear. Oh. 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 Well, better try to get back to them. But what a time. I can fly! I can fly! Danger. It's landed on the beach. Where? Between us and the ship. Our arrows will be useless against dragons, and they're not at all afraid of fire. Uh, with your majesty's leave. No, Reaper Chief, you are not to attempt single combat with it. What do we do, sire? Keep close watch, and in the morning go down to the beach and give it battle. Aye. Well, who will give battle? As many of us as it takes. We have to kill that beast.
careful now. from its eyes. Why, it's crying! Pay no heed to that, Mum. That's what the crocodiles do. Get you off your guard. It's wagging its head, as if it meant to say no. You don't think it can understand what we're saying? Dragon! Can you understand speech? Can you speak? Then it is idle to ask you your business. But if you swear friendship with us, raise your left foreleg. Brilliant, look at that. There's a device upon the go. That I've seen before. Of course you have. It's the mark of a great Narnian family. This is the arm ring which belonged to the missing Lord Octesian. Villain! Have you devoured a Narnian Lord? Perhaps this is the Lord Octesian, turned into a dragon under an enchantment. Yeah. Are you the Lord Octesian? Are you suddenly enchanted? Someone human put under a spell? Eustace! Poor Eustace. You can't even tell us how it happened. Well, never mind. We'll all stand by you. And I'm sure there must be some way of disenchanting you. All the same, what are we to do with it? It could be a great practical use. Here, dragon! The uh, Eustace, I've got a suggestion for you. As you can fly all over the island, you can do a great number of jobs for us. <laughs> We're nearly ready to sail away, so we have to face it. What are we to do with him? We can't take him with us. He'd never fit below deck. Could he stay on deck? Not in rough weather. Couldn't he keep up by flying? However we did it, there's still one problem. How are we going to feed him? Well, we can't just leave him behind, can we? Not enough. No. You're 
have still not shed all that needs to be shed to get down to you, the good, essential you that lies within. I must do it for you. a big, kind, quiet lion with piercing eyes. He's seen Aslan. The one you always talk about. Oh, yes. He's seen Aslan. Anyway, it is good to be back with you. Oh. And I brought the bracelet to prove it. We have found our second lord. Too late. The Lord Octesian must have perished on this island. Let us leave this here for all time with him. Ha! Victory! He's won three times in a row. It's not fair. Eustace, don't start. You've been so nice since you were a dragon. True. It was the absolute making of you. Hello. We've gone about. What are those funny little islands? Well, I swear they weren't there two minutes ago. On deck, shipmates. I smell danger. Would you say the sea extends? How far do we mean to go? Aye. How far will be far enough? There must be land somewhere. Unless we are. We really are. Coming to the edge of the world. Captain! This may well be the last island we see before we come to the end of the world. Aye, sire! We must get as much fresh water aboard as we can! Wouldn't it be better to move on? Quiet spot down there in the bay. Surely, sir, it'd be best to move in then. Well, let's head to a headland. Quite right. Well, what are we to do? We'll get there. 
What is it, Brilliant? Nothing, sire. Except the voyage is devilish enough. Without three or four captains to the ship. Let's explore! This island is so small, we could find a source of this stream. Or shall we try? Well, everything seems well in hand here. Fine, sire. Yes, let's. Come on, Lim. We are a little crazy sailing on and on into that. With no idea what we may meet. No wonder the men are getting anxious. Let's go on. Strange. I can hear a waterfall. Look, there's a tunnel. Surely the real source must lie in there. Let's see. Narnium, too, by the look of it. Look, here's something else. I wonder what other things. The coins are from Narnia, too. Well, this must be all that's left of one of our seven lords. Which one? I wonder how he died. And how we are to avenge him. There's something very fishy about this. We couldn't have been killed in a fight. Why not, Edmund? Well, there are no bones. The enemy might take the armour and leave the body. Who ever heard of a winner taking the body and leaving the armour? Perhaps he was killed by a wild animal. It'd have to be a very clever animal to take a man's chainmail shirt off. Perhaps a dragon? A dragon couldn't do that. I ought to know. I don't think I like this place. Look! That is the most beautiful statue I've ever seen! Do you think we can get it out? We could die for it. Useless. If it's solid gold, we'd never be able to bring it up. It's worth a try. How deep do you think the water is? Well, let's measure it. I do believe that statue is a golden tool. It's a trick of the light. Look, the sword's gone the same colour. <laughs> what happened? I had to let it go. Suddenly it got so heavy. Get back, back from the water, all of you, fast. Gold. Splashes of gold. Why well, has it? The water turns everything into gold. That poor fellow down there. So that wasn't a statue at all. Well, it's all quite plain. He came here on a hot day, took his clothes off to bathe, dived in. Yes. Don't! But just think. We must test it. who owned this island oh, would soon be the richest in the world. I claim this land forever as a possession of Narnia. It shall be called Goldwater Island. And I bind you all to secrecy. No one must know of this. Not even Drinian on pain of death. Who are you talking to? I'm no subject of yours. It should be the other way round. I am one of the four sovereigns of Narnia. Anybody gets the gold, it should be me. It's mine. It's mine. So it's come to that, has it? Yes, the Swinsy. Away, Stop it! Stop it! Mind your business, girl! Go and I'm the Queen of Narnia! And don't you break my revelations! Stop it! 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 Stop
I've never seen such greed. Sire, this is a place with a curse upon it. I think I was being pretty silly too. Is that the effect gold has on people? Your Majesties, if I had the honour of naming this place, I should call it Death Water Island. Does no one want to take this to them? Leave it. We have found our lord. seemed a bit bewitched when they came on board. All I could get out of them was they'd found the body of one of the seven missing lords. Well, that's three, Captain. Only four more. At this rate, we might be home next year. Hold a true class, Rince. soul in sight. We have it all to ourselves. Oh, bother, I've got sand in my shoe. You go on ahead, I'll catch up. Are you sure, ma'am? Captain, don't coddle me. Have you ever seen anywhere safer? Things that seem safe, things that are safe, are often two different things. Done, Chief. You never said a truer word. Yes. Not every day we get strangers. So what I say is, stick to the shore and keep between them and their boat. And let every mother's son look to his weapons. Why? It's just like a house in England. I think it's empty. Catch them when they try to put to sea. You never made a better plan, Chief. Couldn't have put it by I know, I know. I'm a genius. I'm a genius. Well done, Lively then, mates. Off we go! Right again, Chief. Couldn't have put it better. Just what I was going to say myself. Off we go! Off we go! Come on, Chief. Off we go. Last my particles, shipmates. Look at that. Some magic at work here. Machinery. We've come to a civilized country at last. Lucy. People invisible all around me. And they're giants or something, because they stomp, stomp along the ground. And they're going to ambush us back at the seashore. Invisible enemies, cutting us off from the boat. Well, what sort of creatures are they, Lou? I don't know. I couldn't see them. I wonder, do they become visible when you drive a sword into them? Oh, they very soon find out. Let's move away. That must be one of the gentry. Come, listen to what we say. Not that it's any use trying to hide from people you can't see. And maybe all around us. Drinian, how would it be if we gave up the boat for lost, went down further along the shore and signaled to the Dawn Treader to stand in and take us aboard? Not enough depth of water, sire. We could swim. Your Majesty's all. Hear me. It is folly to think of avoiding an invisible enemy by any kind of creeping or skulking. If these creatures mean to bring us to battle, be sure they will succeed. And whatever comes of it, I'd rather face up to them and be caught by the tail by someone I cannot see. I think Reaper's in the right this time. Surely if Rince and the others on the ship see us fighting, they'd be able to do something. Well, if they can't see any enemy, they might think we're just swinging our swords around for the fun of it. We must go and fight. Swords out, everyone. If you've got up a good front, perhaps they'll parley. Maybe I'll only hope. Are you sure you didn't imagine it? Stop! No further, masters. There's 50 of us and more with weapons in our pistols. That's how a chief behaves. Remember what he says. Who the truth is. Say that again. Yeah, that's how a chief behaves. Shh. They know. They know. Invisible one. What do you want with us? What have we done to earn your enmity? No, no, no enmity. We want something done for us that only your little girl can do. Little girl. This lady is a queen of Narnia. We don't know about that. No, no, no. We don't. What do you want? If it's anything against Her Majesty's honor or safety, you will see how many we can kill before we die. Be quiet, Reaper. It's a long story. Suppose we all sit down. Come 
This island, time out of mind, has been the property of a magician. Oh, yeah, a magician. Some might say a great magician. One day, this terrible old magician gets into a great rage and he puts a spell on us, an uglifying spell. If you saw us now, which you may think your stars you can't, you wouldn't believe what we looked like before we were uglified. You wouldn't. Wouldn't believe how nice we were. I do wish you wouldn't interrupt. Well, one day, when the old magician was having his afternoon sleep, we got our courage together and crept into his house and up the stairs to see what we could do about this uglification. But however we searched, nothing could we find to change that spell. What we did find was a spell for making people invisible. Right, Chief. As invisible as you could wish to be. What a relief. Well, at first, anyway. But now we're more tired of being invisible. And we want to change back. Why don't you ask the magician? Ha! <laughs> Disappeared, he has. Or dead. Not a sign of him. Besides, only a young girl can break the spell. That's right, Chief. Got it, Chief. That's why, gentlemen, if your little girl don't come up to scratch, it will be our painful duty to cut all your throats. Nearly in the way of business, and no offence, I hope. Where are your weapons? Are they invisible too? They get visible when they leave our hands. They do. They do. They do. They do. They do. Haven't you got any girls of your own? Yeah, but we doesn't. We doesn't send any of ours up those stairs. In other words, you were asking this lady to face a danger which you don't ask your own daughters to face. That's it, exactly. Got it in one. Wait! Would I have to go up the stairs at night, or may I do it in daylight? 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 Go up those stairs at night? <laughs> right. I'll do it. Don't try to stop me. But Lucy, an evil magician. We can't let you do it. Look! It's a risk to my life as well. I don't want to be cut up in bits by invisible swords. Her Majesty is right. We've no chance of saving her by battle. And the service they ask of her is in no way contrary to Her Majesty's honour, but a noble and heroic act. Hang it all. We can't let a girl take all the risks. A girl? A queen of Narnia? Very well. We agree. Right, into the big house and we'll serve you supper. What have you got there? Why? What's that? She's got the ham. No, the soap goes with the gooseberries. Do you think perhaps these creatures are not human at all? Or like huge grasshoppers or giant jumping frogs? Well, don't let her hear you. Lucy's not too keen on insects. And she's enough on her mind already. Don't worry about it until you have to, Mum. Are we talking about spotted dog or gooseberries now? Now get it straight. Well, look what she's got. She's got the ham, she's got the gooseberries. They're beautiful. I always have gooseberries and soup. Who else has custard and ham? Now you've got me all confused now. I don't know where I am. Well, you've had custard before, haven't you? You've had ham before? Yeah, but not both together on one plate. Well, okay. Remember what they said. The last door on the right. It does seem a bit hard that it's the last door on the right. I mean, the magician could be skulking in any one of the rooms I pass. Try not to think about him. Just find a book of spells and see what you can do. Good luck.
the last door on the right. for warts. Wash your hands by moonlight in a silver basin. Well really, how many people have a basin made out of silver? Spell for taking a swarm of bees. on the subject of beauty. A spell to make her that uttereth it beautiful beyond a lot of mortals. I will say the spell. I want to be the beautiful one. I will say it and I don't care. Land. That all creatures which magic has made invisible shall again be seen. Breathe soft upon this page. And utter the magic words belly, belly, bailet. Lucy. Aslan, it is you. You have been guilty of the sin of jealousy. How long have you been jealous of your sister? Are you angry with me? Yes. But you have also been very brave. Now you are to meet the great magician. Ah, there is nothing to fear. Welcome, sir, to the least of your houses. <laughs> and thank you, Queen Lucy. Gloriakin, do you grow weary of ruling such foolish subjects as I have given you? No. There's no real harm in them. I do sometimes become impatient, waiting for the day when they'll be ruled by wisdom instead of this rough magic. All in good time. Do you intend to show yourself to them? Nay, I should frighten them out of their senses. Many stars will grow old and come to rest in islands before your people are ripe for that. Will you stay with us now, Aslan? I must go. We shall meet again soon. Please, what do you call soon? I call all times soon. Gone. And you and I quite crestfallen. <laughs> How did you enjoy my magic book? Parts of it very much. Did you know I was here all the time? Oh, I knew when I let the duffers make themselves invisible that you'd be coming along to break the spell. But I wasn't sure of the exact day. Did my spell work? Are they visible now? Oh, yes. And are you going to let them off being ugly? Will you put them back as they were before? That's rather a delicate question. You see, it was only they who think they were so beautiful to look at before. Some might say the change was for the better. Are they that conceited? 
Oh, just vanity, especially their chief, and the foolish things believe every word he utters. We did notice that. Oh, the trouble I've had with them. Once they were all for washing up their plates and knives before dinner, said it would save time afterwards. Then they started planting boiled potatoes to save cooking them when they were dug up. But what do they look like? We couldn't work it out. Ah, come There they are. Duffel pads. Well, I can't see anyone. What are those strange mushroom things? Their feet. That's why they thump. I've had an idea. Perhaps if I told them how nice they look now, they won't want to be unuglified. Who knows? You go and try. They won't want to see me. It's all right. The spell's worked. The magician's Luffy and I've seen Aslan. Sorry that we can't give you the pleasure of seeing us as we were before we were uglified. For you wouldn't believe the difference. You wouldn't believe the difference. I like you as you are now. I think you look very nice. True for you, Missy. You couldn't have handsome a lot. Though she sang us how we looked very nice before we were uglified. I do not. I mean, you look very nice now. There's a pair for you. Always right. Always right. I'm saying just the opposite. So you are. Keep it up. Nothing like an opposite. Nothing like an opposite. Nothing like an opposite. Nothing like an opposite. Seven years ago, it must be, a ship from Narnia called here with four lords aboard. Can you remember their names, sir? Remember? <laughs> I can call them up. Lord Revillian. Argos, Mavramon, and Rook. Then the golden man lying in death water must have been the Lord Restimar. Where did the Lord sail on to, sir? Into the farthest eastern seas. Well, can you tell us what dangers we might face in our search? Even I cannot tell what lies in those far eastern seas. But one thing I can do for you. The stern of your ship, it seems to me, is in need of repair. Very strange, sire. A flat sea and the wind against us. And yet we are drawn on and on. But isn't that land ahead? I think that is not land, but a mist. Not a mist, sire, but a... A darkness. And we're being drawn into it. Go back, Captain. Take us back. We've had enough, sir. To the very end of the world, we said. To adventure, to glory. We go on. We go on, Drinian, in this terrible darkness? Not by my advice. Are we of Nadia afraid of the dark? Mouse, you're a hard task, Master. Post lookouts at the bows. We know not what may come upon us. Let, me... Let us put up lights, Your Majesty. Lights, man! Lights fore and aft, and at the masthead! Every man be silent. Keep his ears open. Waves breaking up on the shore. Another island? Three fathoms. Three fathoms, Captain. 
Two fathoms. Two fathoms, Captain. Thank you, Reed. But first, tell us what is the trouble. You must get away. You must get away. This is the island where dreams come true. Oh, that's the island I've been searching for all my life. Dreams come true. I'd have my own ship. You fools! It's not, not dreams, not daydreams, not desires, but where your worst dreams, your worst nightmares come true. You must turn the ship around. Give a full sail. You must get away. I'll pull for your lives. You may say what you like. There are some things no man can face. It's like a huge pair of scissors opening and shutting, getting closer and closer to my body. Scissors. Scissors. Listen. Listen. Scissors. I, I can hear them scuttering up the side of the ship. Oh, no. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming! Settling on the mast. They're coming! We're going down in circles! We're going down in circles! Oh, no! They're coming! Settling on the mast! We're going down in circles! So many! Settling on the mast! When I was worth anything was Lord Roop of Narnia. And I am Caspian, King of Narnia. I've come to find you and your companions, who are my father's friends. Sire, grant me a boon, I pray you. Never send me back to that accursed place. <laughs> what? You've destroyed this. I don't think it was us. Caspian, will this quest ever end? Edmund, really? Of course it will. Will it? All right, when? We have located four of the missing laws. Surely you believe, as I do, that we will find the other three soon. But we've come so far. Well, we must be reaching the limits of the Eastern world. Well, soon there will be nowhere left to look. Perhaps this is the last item. But 
What are they? Beaver sitting on a table? No, it's a huge bird's nest. Looks more like a haystack to me. They will not fight, I think. Are they dead? No, sire. He is warm and his pulse beats. Why, they're only asleep. Must have been pretty long sleep for their hair to go like that. An enchanted sleep. It must be. This island is magic. Do you think we came here to break the spell? We can try. Here are their family crests. The last of the seven lords. Our quest is ended. No, it isn't. We can't wake them. Too much magic in the air around here, sire. Let's get back to a ship. Begging your majesty's pardon. Well, we don't see a dinner like this every day. Eat that food? Never. Depend upon it, sire. It was from eating this food that these lords came by their seven years' sleep. I wouldn't touch it for my life. Captain, back to the ship. Well, the men are right. We can decide tomorrow what we're going to do with the sleepers. We don't eat the food, and there's no point staying here all night. Entirely right for the ship's company, but I will sit at this table all night. Reap, why? This is a great adventure, and the worst thing would be knowing when I get back to Narnia that fear made me walk away from a mystery. I'll stay with you, Reap. And I. And me. Very well, I'll stay too. Your Majesty. Your place, Drinian, is with the ship. Take the men and leave us. All right, sir. Hang on, Ritz. Them, with me. Well, where do we sit? Not too close. Certainly not. Once it gets dark, who knows what might have happened. On the other hand, too far away, and if they did start moving, we wouldn't see a thing. Now remember, we must not fall asleep. Travellers who have come from afar to Aslan's table, welcome. But why do you not eat and drink? Madam, we feared the food. We thought it had cast our friends into an enchanted sleep. They have never tasted it. Well, how did they get like that then? Seven years ago, they came here in a ship. Its sails in rags. Its timbers were almost falling apart. When they came to this table, such an argument grew. Should they stay and eat and end their lives in peace? Or return to Narnia? Or venture on behind the sunrise? The quarrel grew until one gripped the knife of stone. But it was a thing not right for him to touch. And as his fingers closed upon the hilt, deep sleep fell upon all three. Until the enchantment is undone, they will never wake. But why do you not eat? I've told you it is safe. Pepper not a coward. When I look in your face, I believe everything you say. It's just like a witch. That's rubbish, Edmund. Is it? How are we to know that this lady is a friend? You can't know. You can only believe. Or not. Can't say I've ever had turkey pie for breakfast. Delicious. Please, why is it called Aslan's table? It stays set here at his bidding for those who come so far. Some call this island the world's end. But though you can sail still further, this is the last island and the beginning of the end. But how does the food keep? It is renewed every day. This you will see. In the world of my friends, 
they have a story of a prince arriving at a castle where all the people lie in an enchanted sleep. In that story, he could not dissolve the enchantment until he had kissed the princess. Well, here it is different. Here, he cannot kiss the princess until he has dissolved the enchantment. Then, in the name of Aslan, show me how to set about that work at once. My father will teach you that. Sir, will you tell us how to undo the enchantments which hold these Narnian lords asleep? My son, to break this enchantment, you must sail right to the world's end, or as near as you can come to it. And you must return, leaving at least one member of your company behind. And what will happen to that one? He must go on to the utter east and never return to the world. That would be the greatest adventure of all. I am Ramandu. <laughs> I see the name means nothing to you. And no wonder. For the days when I was a star in the heavens ceased a long time before any of you knew the world. So you're no longer a star? I am a star at rest, my daughter. When I set for the last time, old beyond all that you can reckon, I was carried to this island. But I am not as old now as I was then. Every morning, a bird brings me a fireberry from the valleys in the sun. And every fireberry takes a little of my age. When I am as young as a child that was born yesterday, I shall take my rising again and once more tread the great dance. Come, are you yet resolved? Do you sail home or to the end of the world? Sir, there is no question about that. It is very plainly part of our quest to rescue these three lords from their enchantment. Thank you, Reaper Chief. I think so too. It would break my heart not to go as close to the world's end as the Dawn Treader will take us. Sire. What is it, Rooney? What of the crew? They signed on to seek the Seven Lords, not to reach the edge of the world. If we sail east from here, we may well reach the edge. And some of them are afraid of... what will happen to us there. Besides, Caspian, there is Lord Root. True. He is a broken man. He needs rest. In this island, there is sleep beyond measure. Sleep without dreams. Let him sit with the other three and drink oblivion until your return. You're here to speak. Speak, Your Majesty. What the men are asking is, whether we turn back here or further east, how do we get back home? And why is that? 
It's been west winds all the way, driving us ever further and further east. If the winds don't change, how do we get back to Narnia? That's landsman's talk, Rince. In these seas, seems to me there's a prevailing wind in the late summer. After the new year, it will change. And we'll have sufficient wind to take us westward and home. Aye. Aye, winds there may be. But by your leave, sire, if I was in command, I'd say winter here. And begin the voyage home in March, in spring and fine weather. And what will you eat while you winter here? Well, this table's filled with the king's banquet every day. That'd do fine. That's for us. We go no further. Uh, Aye. Stay. What are we to do? There's mutiny in the air. Listen all. There is one among us known for its bravery. Have you nothing to say, Rufa Chief? Why, Your Majesty? What is there to be said? My own plans are made. While I can, I shall sail east on the dawn treader. When she fails me, I paddle east in my coracle. When she sinks, I shall swim east with my four paws. When I can swim no longer, if I have not yet reached Aslan's country, then I shall sink with my nose to the sunrise. I say the same, barring the bit about the coracle, for it wouldn't bear my weight. <laughs> I'm not going to be outdone by a mouse. Go, oh, man, Rince. Friends, I will not deceive you. The last part of our voyage may take us into places more dangerous and more sacred than any we have seen before. In Aslan's name, I will take no hands who are unwilling. I want only those men hardest in battle, most skilled in seamanship, most loyal to our person. Aslan's maid. Do you think the privilege of seeing the last things is to be bought for a song? Why, every man who sails with us will bequeath the golden title of Dawn Treader to all his descendants forevermore. Only those good enough skilled enough, brave enough, will come. So, who's with me? I'm I'm nice. Nice. My soul! The song sung over me in my cradle, where the waves grow sweet. Doubt not, Rupichi. There is the utter east. Mouse! Sire. drawn by the strongest current. Not so nice. If the world really has an edge, and we're getting close to it, why, that's how I've always imagined it. The world like a great round table, the waters of all the oceans pouring endlessly over the edge. The ship will tip up. For a moment, we shall see over the edge. Then down, down, down. No! I, I. But what are we waiting for us when we get there? Aslan's country. What do you see? It looks like ice. It's not ice. Yet, what is it?
friends, we have fulfilled our quest. The seven lords are all accounted for, and if one of us stays behind here, you will find when you go back that the three sleeping lords are awake. To you, my Lord Drinian, I leave the ship, bidding you sail back to Narnia with all speed. And all of you, led by the Lord Drinian, will choose a new king. But, sire, are you abdicating? I must stay to see the world's end. Caspian, you can't do this. Most certainly his majesty cannot. For you know, sire, that I am the one to stay. Can't? Who says can't to a king? Begging your pardon, sire, but... Well, if one of us did that, it would be called deserting. Rhinoff, you presume too much on your long service. Nay, sir. He is right. By the mane of Aslan, I thought you were my subjects here, not my masters. I am not your subject, and I say you cannot do this thing. Your Majesty, you break faith with all your subjects if you do not return. You shall not please yourself with adventures as though you were a private person. You dare to lecture me! Caspian! Didn't you almost promise to Ramadou's daughter that you'd go back to her? Then we all go back. Majesty, for the spell to work, one must stay. And I am that one. Will no one silence that mouse? Vince Caspian. Vince Caspian. Hear me. Aslan has been with you. <laughs> and his words were terrible. You are to go reap. And you, Edmund, Lucy, and Eustace. Do you understand? We're to be parted. I'm to go back, and you go on alone, beyond the end of this world. And he means now, at once. What is the good of anything? Dear Caspian, you knew we had to go back to our own world sooner or later. This is Suva. Did he say what else is to happen? Here, after we have gone? Oh, yes. Magus! Magus! Civilian! When I go on alone, I shall not need this anymore. Ground. We can sail no further. Come along. Aslan's country is from your own world. 
There is a way to Aslan, from our world too. Will you tell us how to get to your country from our world? When the moment comes, you will know. But now I will open the door in the sky and send you back to your own land. Are we able to come back to Narnia? Lucy, you and your brother will never come back to Narnia. You are too old. Back to your own world with you. Did it really happen? Mm -hmm.